Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech. And in this video, I'm going to go over phase lead compensation using Bode plots. So here's the type of closed loop control system that we're going to be working with right here. We have a reference input R and output Y. We have some uh, plant transfer function G of S. And then the compensator, we'll call it D of S for now, which is the phase lead compensator. And just so you remember what a phase lead compensator looks like from a pole zero diagram perspective is you have a zero and a pole and the zero is closer to the imaginary axis than the pole. Now the way that this compensator is described with the T and the alpha T means that this distance is 1 over T and this distance is 1 over alpha T where alpha is less than 1. We can also write this in Evans form, and in that case we'd have Kc times T, S plus 1 over capital T, alpha T, S plus 1 over alpha T. And of course that T would cancel with that T, and that would be the compensator. So now we can see the zero and the pole as the zero and the pole. Now, what does a phase lead compensator do for you? Well, it allows you to put a desired amount of phase, we'll call it phi m, at omega m. It has a small, but we don't want to neglect it, effect on the magnitude plot. So while we're adding this beautiful phase to the phase plot, it will also shift the magnitude plot up, which, as you'll see in a minute, changes the gain crossover frequency, and we have to be very careful about that. Now, how much phase can you get? Well, from one compensator, you can get up to maybe 50 degrees of phase. If you need more than that, then you ought to use additional phase lead compensators. Now, here's a Bode plot of just the compensator. So let me scratch that out and call this the magnitude of D and the phase angle of D instead of uh, G. And I'll go ahead and cross this out and call that D also. So what I've done is I've made a Bode plot for this particular transfer function, 3 times s plus 1 over s plus 3, which is really just a phase lead compensator with an alpha of 1 over 3 and a capital T of 1. What I've done is I have generated a MATLAB Bode plot in blue, then overlaid on top of it the approximate sketch that you would get if you were doing this using some of the asymptotic sketching rules for Bode plots. So what we can see here are a couple things. Let's focus on this plot first. The maximum amount of phase that we get from this compensator is phi m equals inverse sine of the quantity 1 minus alpha over 1 plus alpha. So that is going to be how we're going to determine what alpha is of the compensator. It's going to be based on how much phase we want to extract from that phase lead compensator. Now at that maximum phase point, if we go up here, we can see that the magnitude plot actually goes up a small amount. And the amount it goes up is this, negative 10 times log alpha. Now, we can write that in a slightly different form. Maybe that's good to do. We can write it as 10 log 1 over alpha. So as soon as we know alpha from how much phase we want, we can determine how much the magnitude plot is going to shift up. And that is what's going to lead into determining where we put this maximum phase of phi m. We're going to put it at some location omega m, and we'll determine that, again, based on how much that magnitude plot shifts up and how much it shifts the gain crossover frequency. So here's a summary of the design procedure. We'll compute alpha based on how much phase we need. And then we can compute the frequency where we want to put the phase, and we'll call that omega m, by knowing how much the magnitude plot is going to shift due to that value of alpha. And then we'll just compute capital T. Then we have nearly everything we need to construct the phase lead compensator, which is this. Notice I said almost everything we need. We haven't said anything about this KC. We can use KC to satisfy steady state error requirements that might be part of the design process. So here's a few features of the lead compensator. It can be used to increase the system's closed loop bandwidth, leading to faster response. 
It can be used to reduce the peak overshoot and certainly to satisfy phase margin requirements. That's its main purpose. But it may accentuate high frequency noise and it can also, because of the increased gain, result in the need for larger actuators. And it'll also have very little effect on steady state error behavior, except for how you manipulate capital KC. So let's do an example. So let's say we have this plant and we'll call this capital D based on the previous slides. What we'll do is, is design a lead compensator so that the steady state error to a ramp input is less than or equal to 0 0.01 and the phase margin is greater than or equal to 50 degrees. So let's figure out what we have to have for KC to handle that steady state error requirement. This is a type 1 system, it's unity feedback, so we can express the velocity error constant as the limit as s goes to 0 of d times g, where this is g, multiplied by s, of course. And so what this gives us is 2.5 kc over 2.5, and that's just kc. So the steady state error to a ramp input is 1 over kc, and if that has to be less than 0 0.01, it means that kc has to be greater than or equal to 100. So let's just pick KC equal to 100. Now to do the rest of the design, let's use MATLAB. So here I've coded in the transfer function with the KC of 100, and we'll just use a Bode plot of G to pick off the phase margin and the gain crossover frequency, and then finish off the design using CISO tool after doing a few calculations. So here's the Bode plot, and we have a gain crossover frequency of roughly 15.8 radians per second. If I go down to the phase plot to that same frequency line, we can see that we have about 9 degrees of phase margin. So we have a gain crossover at 15.8 radians per second and 9 degrees of phase margin. Now it would be tempting to put that little phase bubble of the lead compensator right here at the gain crossover frequency. But if we did that, it would be a mistake because we know that the magnitude plot is going to shift up due to that phase lead compensator. That would move the gain crossover frequency to the right and we'd be on the downside of that little phase bubble and we wouldn't be extracting the maximum amount of phase from our compensator. So we don't want to do that. So let's go back to the scratch pad. We'll do some calculations to determine exactly where we want to put that gain crossover frequency. So from the Bode plot where KC was equal to 100, we had a gain crossover frequency of roughly 15.7 radians per second, and the phase margin was about 9 degrees. Now, for the design, we need to have more than 50 degrees of phase margin. So it would be tempting to just use 50 degrees as our design requirement, but really we should add a little bit to that so that we give ourselves a little bit of margin for our phase margin. So let's go ahead and give ourselves an extra 10% or maybe 55 degrees. Now we already have 9 degrees, we're going to target 55, so what we're really going to shoot for for phi, phi m is 46 degrees. So that's how much phase we're going to try to get from our lead compensator. That means that 1 over alpha, which is 1 plus sine phi m, over 1 minus sine phi m is about 6.1 and which also means that alpha is about 0.16. Now what we need to do is find out how much the magnitude plot is going to shift due to the phase lead compensator. So the amount of shift in the magnitude plot is going to be 10 log 1 over alpha and that is about 8 dB. So let's go back to the Bode plot and find the frequency where the magnitude plot is negative 8 dB because this is how much the lead compensator is going to scale it up. So let me shift this dot down to negative 8 dB and we see that the frequency is at 25 radians per second. That's our omega m. So let's go back to the scratch pad and finish off the calculations. So from the Bode plot, we determine that omega n is 25 radians per second. 
That will be the new gain crossover frequency when we implement the lead compensator that gives us 46 degrees of phase lead. Now all we have to do is calculate capital T, and that's equal to 1 over omega m square root of alpha. So if I use 25 radians per second and 0.16, what I get is roughly 0.1. So now we have the compensator. D is equal to 100, that's our Kc, times 0.1s plus 1 over 0.016s plus 1. And there it is. Now, if I factor out the 0.1 and the 0.016, that is, put it into Evans form, then what we would get is D is equal to 625 S plus 10 divided by S plus 62.5. And there it is. So now we can see that we have a 0 at 10 and a pole at 62.5. Again, from a pole zero diagram perspective, we have a zero here and a pole out there somewhere. So let's go back to MATLAB one last time and we'll use CISO tool to finish off the design. So CISO tool will allow us to enter in the compensator and also look at the step response just for fun. So here's the compensator. We already have the gain of 100 in there, so I'll leave that as 1. And here I will add in a lead compensator. It defaults to the 0 at negative 1. We want it at 10 and the real pole at 62.5. Let me minimize that. And what I'll do here is change this to the open loop Bode plot and get rid of the second plot. There we go. That way I don't really need to look at the root locus for this task. Okay, so there's our Bode plot. Beautiful. You can see the remnants of the phase bubble right here. And look at that phase margin. We got 52.1 degrees, and our gain crossover frequency is 24.9. That's almost exactly what we designed using our equations on the scratch pad. Just as a reference, here's the original Bode plot with the KC of 100. The phase goes down like this, smoothly going down to negative 180. What we did is, is we put a little phase bubble right about here. And you can see that in the compensated phase plot. Now let's go ahead and look at a step response. What we have here in blue is the step response, and in green, the actuation. So let me turn off the actuation just so that we can focus on the step response. And there it is. And we can annotate this with the percent overshoot, settling time, and rise time. And if I hover over those dots, I can pull those out. So 0.267 seconds for the settling time, about 23% overshoot, and a rise time of about 0.05 seconds. So to summarize, we went through some of the design calculations for phase lead compensation using Bode plots. And the biggest trick is that after you determine how much phase you want, you have to make sure that you put it at the right place. And that's typically going to be a little bit to the right of the gain crossover frequency of the... Then we did an example where we did exactly that. And at the end of the example, we ended up satisfying our phase margin, which was 50 degrees, and we got 52. And our steady state error requirement said that the gain needed to be 100, and that's exactly what we went for. So once again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.